All right, my number one question is, how do I replace the O-ring? My O-ring is bad. What do I do? All right. The O-ring size, the inside diameter on all Zebco 33s that look like this in this configuration is 50 millimeters. Your thickness, which is the one that you want, is 4 millimeters. Less importance is the width, and the width is actually the channel that it's going to fit in, which is right here. This channel. Take that out. 3 millimeters, right there. 4 millimeters, right here. And you must have four millimeters because that O-ring has to sit that distance minimum above the channel. The O-ring styles from 1947 to 1968 where the round o-ring we're all familiar with now during the sometime during the 1970s up till production ended in the 80s they went to this flat o-ring looks like this side view of it it's no better no worse than the standard O-ring you're familiar with. It has the same dimensions exactly. So you still need four millimeter height to do its job. And what is its job? We're going to demystify this whole O-ring deal right now so you can repair any reel you find. The old O-rings have been working now for 70 years, but sometimes they get cut and uh, you lay another o-ring in there, uh, especially this style, uh, it could last uh, easily another hundred years of operation. All right, what does this do? All right, this beautiful reel here um, was donated to us by Butch Sanders of the Texas Fishing Forum uh, to teach with and to catch a bass with. He wants us to see it's catch a bass. This was his reel for many, many years, and uh, the cover lock, the guts of it came off, fell into the reel, and I've redone that, cleaned it out, because it sat on top of his mantelpiece for years and years and years. It's a rare, rare opportunity for us to look at a stock his 1970s when he got it, so it's a 1968-1969 reel in that era. And um, I took those covers off. Now, looking at the handle, the way you can take them both off at once is this motion here. You see these little indents to take that off. All right, what does our o-ring do. Well here's the trigger plunger. When we press that these two the bars here, it's actually a single bar, but this bar takes this plate back here and that plate is this plate. All of these plates on all and all these parts all interchange no matter what year it is which makes rebuilding these really really simple. Now this plate goes forward. You've got your o-ring in here and see the thickness it rises just above the plate four millimeters. When I press that plunger it stops the line. That is its only job, is to stop the line, click the button, and cast. 
All right. And if we're trying to land it on an individual lily pad with these, these are very accurate. Um, we can do that. Lines going out. We click it again. If we actually don't click it, we just stop the line with our plunger here. This is actually what? You know this. This is a clutch. It's not a spinning clutch. It just stays in one place. And wherever the line is going out around this thing, when you hit the clutch, it stops it. Only job it has. That's it. And since it's not spinning, we can repair this with virtually any material that will simply stop that line. All right? So I hope that helps you, uh, you know, kind of demystifies this whole O-ring thing and so you're not that scared of it if you find a reel that doesn't have an O-ring in it or if it does and it's, it's, there's something wrong with it, you're not afraid to repair it. All right, let, let's talk about some repair methods. If you don't find an O-ring, now you can get an O-ring kit. Here's how you read it. Three millimeters inside diameter. Well, you need a 50 by one millimeter thick. Well, you need four millimeters thick. The biggest O-ring in this kit, particular kit, is 22 millimeters. So you're going you're gonna to bypass this. You're going to look for the next largest kit until you get to 50. All right, you got a 50 millimeter. You're good to go. You get you just right. What if it, the kit has a 55 millimeter? You know what? What do I do? All right. Well, here's what you can do. Cut the O ring off. And I'm going to stop the camera for just a minute. We're going to continue because uh, it, it makes bits so big that I can't. Uh, upload it. We're right back. We're gonna up. We're gonna take and we're gonna lay the cut O-ring in there. Now, what I like to do is get the size first, lay it in, which I've already done, as you can see. Perfect. Take a look at it. Look good. Now this can be bigger than four millimeters, but it can't be any less. You can't have any part of this metal stopping your line because it cut it. Damage your line, you know, and you'll lose the fish. Now what can we do to tidy up this cut and glue our O-ring in. Alright, there's a product called Plasti Dip. I'm showing it to you right now. And you can take and dot that in here. It's a, it's a vulcanized rubber product. It turns to rubber when it dries. So dot that in. Lay your O-ring in. And then down here on the end, where it's messy, a little messy, just take a toothpick or a screwdriver, whatever you want, and some plasti dip. Tidy that up so that your line doesn't fall in that crack and give you a problem. As long as it's solid and it'll stop the line, it'll work. Now look at what this actually is. That's nothing but a ball bungee. And it would work perfectly. No problem at all. That may last 300 years. I don't know. You know, the, uh, the original O-rings now are 70 years old. So, uh, and they're still working. I'm, I'm going to put this right back in a reel. Okay. All right, I'm going to show you the operation of it one more time just to make a point of it. This is a night during the 1980s. They went to a plastic body but it's the same 
same setup, all the parts interchange with all your earlier models. And just to make a point of that, this, these two pieces, the spinner and this uh, line holder are from a 1950s reel. And all that has to do is stop the line. Now when we wind the line, when we put our end cap, this is a 1956, we put our end cap here, lines going in, this little button right here winds our line back around the spool. So any part you have will fit on any of the reels. So anything you see anywhere, you, you know, that will help you not be afraid. You pick up an old junker clunker like that in that kind of condition, you know you can bring it back. Either bring it back or use the parts from this to bring another one back. There's your, of course, your clutch. Now, let's go through the years. Uh, this is a plastic model, one of the last built in the USA before they sent everything to China and, and discontinued this in the 80s. This is what it looked like when you hear people say big rivet, small rivet, whatever rivet, small rivet. Zebco made in the USA, but they've gone to plastic. All these inserts, though, are still metal. So that even though it's plastic, it'll last a heck of a long time as long as you just keep it, keep it lubricated. All right. During the 1970s, what did we have? We had steel gears, brass inserts, and these probably will last the longest of all because it is steel gears, possibly. Um, usually, these are strong enough to stand up to some of the really dumb things people did with them which is locked down the drag and you know I'm hung up on the bank with a plug and reel the boat over to the, the uh, shore. They are that strong. They're so strong that uh, we have a lot of professional fishing tournaments out here in, Ta in uh, Thomas Mill Creek on Lake Eufaula where I live and I can eat you know here they come with all their patches and the shrink wrap boat and the whole bit and I'll say, you know, show me your old Zebco, and out comes one of these, because they always, always work. And as far as a um, plastics reel, they are second to none, even. This is a 1956. This is my grandfather's reel, and big rivet. Medium-sized rivet on the 1970s, from 68 onward, actually. Small rivet, 1980. And Zebco Company gives you a serial number, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, these reels back in the day, uh, you know, it was well over a hundred dollars because these were precision engineered. Somebody actually put all this together, checked it out, adjusted the uh, gear tension here. This slides in and out 
and made sure your reel was co correct because if anything went wrong with it and you sent it back to the factory, you either got a new reel or they repaired your reel and sent it back to you. Anything went wrong. So uh, it was meant to last. From the time of inception in the 40s up until 1968, you had brass gears. See how fine those brass gears are? Very fine. Makes for an excellent plastics reel because you can you can just move that thing along just so slow and uh, just just perfect for that. All right. I've got one more thing to show you and that is how the drag mechanism works. You see this bar in here? It's, it's almost imperceptible, but as we're taking operating our drag wheel here, it's going back and forth. Maybe I can show you that better with this screw. This screw is on the top of the reel. Your spool is right here. Can you pick up that that screw is turning? Now you can. So I do it fast. See how that, that works that way? All right. All right, now that you've seen the screw turning, I'm going to take my granddad's Zebco apart. It still fishes every day. And you can see the screw. You can see the brass piece that comes in. What you can't see is that that brass piece has a slot in it right there. Okay, now that slot has a little piece of metal that goes in it right here. And as we turn our drag and this goes in, see that flap coming out? That's your drag. Okay, let me let me do this so that you can see it. See, it's going back in, coming back out. And this is a piece of steel stock. And you can do this with brass stock as well. See how it's wrapped around? Wrapped around. So if we put this all the way back in, now we can put our spool back on. Well, come on now. Put our spool back on, and then we can put our spinner back on. Okay, so what do you do if you've got a non-operational drag? You pick one up, and it's got no flap in it. Well, what you're going to do is turn this around until you can see the slot. And you're going to grab or find a piece of brass stock, stick it in here like that, and wrap it around, oh, maybe, maybe to there would be just fine. If you have to, as I would with this one, file it down until it would fit in that slot, wrap it around, and now you'll have a working drag because all that happened was the original piece of metal you know was either pulled out or uh, came out and that can happen when they forget they pull the spool off with this flap out they've got the drag set on oh my spool won't come out let me go ahead and dial it out way out so you can see it Oh, my, my, you know, my spool is stuck. Whap, they pull it out, and that pulls this piece of metal out. That's how that happens. There's no other way for it to happen. Now, 
your drags you want to just either put a little bit of oil here or a light grease because if you get a big fish you want that drag that spool to work or you'll lose a big fish you can get in most fish just going mono a mono but if you get a truly big fish you want your drag to work I hope this has been educational for you. The next step that we're going to do is go out and get a fish with Bush, Butch Sanders reel. Just a beautiful thing. Uh, totally stocked.